There are two aspects of this anesthesia service. So you should be knowing whether the physician, meaning the anesthesiologist, is performing this medical direction or a medical supervision. So let's understand the difference between these two terms. Whenever we say as a medical direction, it should include certain seven elements. So the first thing would be the pre-anesthetic exam and evaluation. So what happens here is, see for every service, you know, when we go and see a doctor, there is always an e &M service, an evaluation management service. Not that all of a sudden the surgeon would subject you to do this particular surgery because he'll have to weigh the pros and cons of this surgery, the risks and benefits of doing this particular procedure. So an initial evaluation is being done to ascertain what are the probable methods of surgeries that can be done or is a patient qualifying for this first procedure itself? Is he a, a viable candidate for this particular operation or not? So that they will decide whether to go ahead with the surgery or not. If the patient is like 90, 95 plus, they might not do this particular surgery because considering the patient's age. Same way, the anesthesiologist will have to perform an evaluation and management of this particular patient. He will have to see the patient's history, make an examination, consider the risk factors that are involved for giving these types of anesthesia. So the first thing would be the pre-anesthetic examination and evaluation by the anesthesiologist. Secondly, the anesthesiologist develops the plan of care. So here he will determine what is the type of anesthesia that can be given. Okay, say if the patient is having reflux disease, a GERD or dyslipidemia or diabetes or any central nervous system disorders like seizures because patient they might develop a hypersensitivity reaction or idiosyncratic reaction as well. So all these factors need to be taken into consideration. Is the patient allergic to any particular you know drugs? That should also be taken into consideration. Thirdly, he participates in the needed part of the procedure. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's like when the nurse anesthetist is performing the procedure and if there is some crisis, then the doctor will have to go and attend to the nurse call. So thirdly, it is the physician will have to participate in the most emergency part of the procedure. And fourthly, ensure the healthcare services is done by qualified anesthetics. So it is like he should ensure if he is going to delegate the work to the CRNAs, then they should be competitive enough to handle their and discharge their function as anesthesia providers. And fifth, he will have to monitor the course of the anesthetic administration. So how, you know, first phase induction, how the patient is, you know, he is being given and how he is reacting and how is he coming back. So that should be monitored by the anesthesiologist. Next is he should be physically present. That means whenever the demanding part of the procedure is being done and if it requires the presence of the anesthesiologist, then he will have to render his service. So physical presence is also needed as a sixth element. And finally, it is in the post anesthesia care unit. The care of the anesthesia provider ends actually when the patient is being discharged into the PACU, which is a post anesthesia care unit. So from that time till the PACU, now the anesthesiologist is taking the full care of the patient. From there on, the care will be given back to the surgeon.